Hi, and welcome to Faith, Art, and Tiny Houses. I'm your host, Carmen Shank. Welcome back to the podcast. My guest today is Brenda Mason. She is a tiny house speaker, author, and a downsizing consultant. And her story is really fascinating to me. She moved from uh, Utah to Virginia, and she moved from a 3,100 square foot, five bedroom, three bath, two car garage home to a 310 square foot tiny house. (laughs) In her case, that is a converted motor coach. And you know what? She did this transformation in 31 days. And I think there's so much that we can learn for Brenda in making a big move like that and really making the choice to go wholeheartedly after the transformation that you want in your life. So welcome to the podcast today, Brenda. So um, I know that it touches your heart when you see somebody who's feeling overwhelmed by having too much stuff and is feeling stuck with that situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so somebody, so you meet somebody somewhere or just let's just say for, our, for the example, our listener today who's with us and is looking around at the piles and is feeling the frustration of having too much and um, has been listening to you talk about freedom. Okay. What would you say? Let's assume it's a her. What would you say to her? I get it. I've been there and you yeah. can do this. And it is hard, but it, it's so freeing. And as you go through it, you start seeing that there is light on the other side of the boxes and the piles. Yes. And, um, you know, we, we've talked today and you know that this is overwhelming to you or paralyzing. I, I mean, I'd get paralyzed. I, I had a really good experience with the Lord because every five minutes I was like, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> help me. I can't do this. Right. So uh, you don't have to do it alone. I'm more than happy to help with it. Um, but you're surrounded by all this. You know, that's not where, you know, there's something in your mind that, that you envision mm-hmm. how you want it to be. Right. That's creating your oasis. You got to kind of get that in your mind first. And then I'm going to tell you, you start looking to figure out your resources, you know, where you're going to donate things, where you would sell it. How would you do it? Start looking at that. You know, you've heard me talk about the clutter codes. Those are real. Mm -hmm. Um, You just need to be aware of those. And then I do, I'm going to tell you to start with your clothing and and in the clothing. And I'm very similar to Marie Kondo in that. um, And even if you don't pull it all out in one huge pile, mine was massive, but I just emptied my entire closet everything, you know, I I didn't have dresser drawers, everything was in my closet, Mm -hmm. but I brought everything out, and I, I have my criterion there, you know, it's got to feel good on you, it's got to, you know, you got to love the color, you know, if it's a color you really hate, for me, it's always the color, you know, so (laughs) it it, it needs to feel good, you know, technically, it needs to have your name written on, and I'm not talking about the underwear, you know, it belongs to you, I'm talking about, (laughs) it's your style, you look good, this is, you know, this is me, you know, you have that, feel when you're walking down the street, mm-hmm. um, you know, preferably without stains, preferably with all the buttons, you know, it needs right. to be in good condition for you. Yeah. You know, that's a keeper. Mm-hmm. Other things, um, you know, the elastic is stretched out of it. And maybe one day you're going to replace that elastic for a color you don't even really like. It's time to let that go. Yeah. I'm just saying, you yeah. know, so I'll give you the criteria. When you start doing that, it starts building your muscles. And mm-hmm. if you pick up something that you're, eh, I'm not so sure about, no, I've really got to keep it set it aside, continue to go through, because then all of a sudden, and you don't want to keep it like, well, I got to keep five, five tops, or that's, it's with everything, you just pull things that you really love, you know, and that you need, or that you use, I mean, you know, sometimes you might not like the color of the underwear, but it's in good shape, and, you know, for now, that's what you have, so you go with that, right. so that's right. okay, you know, you have some of those moments, or a belt, or something, but, um, you know, but, but by the time you've done that, you already know that there's a women's shelter down the road that's going to take things, and there's um, a this and a that, whatever you've got in your mind. And you know, these business suits will go there and it'll help somebody. So when all of a sudden you know that you're going to the middle of nowhere, like I did, and I'm going to be living in, <laughs> in jeans, you know, yeah. I don't need that business yeah. suit, but I'll tell you, I kept a summer business suit and I kept a winter suit mm-hmm. and I've used them and I, cause I knew I'd need them one day. I don't really liked them and they fit good and people mm-hmm. tell me I look good in them. So I kept them. So, yeah. um, you know, you need to start. And the other thing I'm going to tell you is don't wait. I've said it before. Don't wait for one day. It started now, yeah. Yeah. you know, because 
you're going to get more confident. You're going to have the freedom. I mean, it's, it's, it's life-changing. I'll tell you it. another question you might be getting ready to ask me. I've had somebody raise their hand and they say, I want to downsize so bad, but my husband doesn't want to get rid of anything. Yeah. What do we do? And I just gotten done going over my rule of four where I said, do you honestly need it? Do you really use it? Do you truly love it? And if not, rehome it. And I wanted to answer, do you really need, do you really use it? need him? Do you honestly need him? Do you truly love him? If not, it's time to rehome that person. But I didn't say that. So, but what I have come Although to... Although that would apply. It would, very much so. I think she's waiting for me to say that, actually, but I didn't. So I'll tell you now. So it's kind of a joke. But um, go ahead... And know what you want your home to look like, you know, and especially if the person doesn't want, I just met a couple in Colorado, I will tell you this one, met a couple in Colorado, and she does not want to go to a smaller place, they're in a 600 square foot home, she does not want to go smaller, Mm -hmm. but she wants to declutter, Mm -hmm. he insists that they've got to go smaller, but he keeps bringing stuff home, Ah. and he won't let go of anything, Mm -hmm. talk about, you know, button heads, yin and yang, hello, hello. Anyhow, so they got my book. We talked and stuff. Anyhow, and I told her, I said, that's okay. I said, go ahead and go through your things. You know, you know how you want your home to look. Yeah. Get the resources for your things. You're aware of the clutter codes. You both are aware of these clutter codes because we were talking about it. Go ahead and go through your clothing, you know, and, and go through your, your, clothing. your side of the bathroom. Keep clothing. Good exactly. Your clothing. Only yeah. yours. Each yeah. person has to do their own yeah. thing. Yeah. And I said, you know, go, go ahead and go through all of yours because once people watch you, they may get on board. That's right. Um, and, you know, and some of the people, like the one lady that she wanted to downsize, he didn't want to. I thought, you know, go ahead and go through all of your things. Don't touch any of his or your children's or whatever, but people will watch you. But in the morning when you wake up and you go to get your clothing out, you're going to have your oasis in your clothing. You're going to have what you want, what feels good, looks good to you. And you just reach your hand and pull it out and boom, you got it, you know. And uh, the boy that helps you shopping down the way and all kinds of things. But anyhow, so... You go through all the things that are yours, and then, um, then you know, you've done what you can, and, and you love that. But a lot of times people get on board then, or they see it, and they're like, wow, this looks really good. And they look around, and they see that the clutter is theirs. Yes. Sudden, they want you to help them with it. So there then you go. do it, and then you'll get to the furniture pieces or whatever that are, um, you know, the joint things. You have to leave those joint things, but things. So it, it really does. It, it it starts to make a difference. And I'm going to tell you that even though it was just me that was doing things, I saw it with my daughter because she had to go through hers. She let go of almost everything. Um, anyhow, and then, but I've seen it in other couples that I've been working with. You know, the one, uh, the one lady, and he ended up taking uh, a day off to come home and do his the next day. He's like, well, can, can oh. she just stay and, and can I come and do mine the next day? And they're like, yeah. So I don't, oh. so I, so, well you know, yeah. I would say, um, you know, because to me in a marriage, it is the two of you, but you're still, you're both individual yep. and you're both together as one. So go ahead and do your things, let him do his. And then, you know, th- there may be possibilities there, mm-hmm. but if you're waiting and wait, oh, and then, and then sometimes when you get done with your d- downsizing of your stuff, maybe all of a sudden you don't want to go smaller. You don't need to go bigger. You mm-hmm. know, maybe you start liking your home in your life right where it is. And you've simplified your stuff. You've simplified your kitchen yeah. or whatever you're in charge of. And, and, you know, if, if he refuses to go through his collection of, ball caps or, or <laughs> shot glasses or whatever, yeah. you know, you got to like just, but all of a sudden, you don't, it just doesn't bother you as much anymore. That's his, that's his stuff, you know, and then maybe you've made room so much that you can get all his stuff off into his own man cave room and you just close yes. that door. You know, you're decluttered. <laughs> the house isn't, but you are and you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This has been great. I'm going to add one thing, one thing to her list of recommendations on where to begin with the overwhelm. And that is get the book. Thank you. (laughs) One thing I really appreciate about this series is that it's so, um, it's so specific. You take one thing at a time. Every time I've ever moved my house, I have worked a little bit in that room for a while, and then I've gone over and worked in that room for a while, and I've basically just destroyed the whole house. And so it's a lot more uh, invasive and a lot more traumatic than it would need to be. If you can do, even if it's in the 31 days, which seems like it would be traumatic, but the beauty of it is it's one thing at a time. You're not taking an ADD approach. And so if you do the one thing at a time approach and that keeps it from blowing the whole house to smithereens and it keeps it in a place that's manageable. And you know what? I think one of my favorite parts about it is, you know, when you're done, (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you actually have a, a point in the day when you're done instead right. of I'm moving. So I never get a moment to relax. Right. That's huge. Um, so I really love that about this process Thank as you. well. It works. It does. Uh, you can do it in 31 days. You can do a chapter a week. Um, you can take this at your pace, um, but it does. It's going to work. It's going to work for you. Yes, even you. <laughs> <laughs> if it worked for me. It's crazy because I'm, you know, as you can even tell with me talking, I just from one thing to another and I go yeah. all over the place. And yeah. I always had that room. I, I, people were coming. So I always had organization and neat areas. Mm -hmm. We always had junk rooms. Yes. And so it was real easy to walk down the hallway and put something in a door, or close that door. Yep. So I wouldn't think about it. I hope nobody ever opened that door yeah. because they'd find out some things about me that, that would blow their minds. I mean, I don't mean in weird ways. I'm just <laughs> thinking I'm so organized. And then be this room just piled with stuff. Yeah. And uh, so when you walk down and you put that in and close the door, you're really not decluttered and organized like you think you are temporarily. Yeah. But um, yeah, so you eventually get to it. So, yeah. Yeah. Good luck with your journeys because I know you can do it. Yes. If I did it, you I can. I second that. We have both yeah. have done, a, well, you've done more than I have, but uh, I've still got a storage unit. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I, I still have my trailer. There you go. I didn't, I didn't sell it. It's not yeah. totally full, but right. you know, I put a couple of things in it now that yeah. I'm going out on the road, you know, my tent yeah. and stuff, so. And I don't, there's no shame in, in having a storage unit necessarily. I think the, the beautiful thing is I will so celebrate not having one. <laughs> I don't want to put shame on anybody for, oh, no. um, for having uh, storage because it's useful. I Absolutely. just, I just don't recommend doing it for five years like I have. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but you know, it's um, with the storage unit too. It's, it, there's a little bit of weight on you about it. You know, it's like in the back of your mind, as you and know. You remember every month. When the as, yes. <laughs> yeah. But it's not as heavy as it was, you know, right. and, and, and you can live in yeah. your smaller place. So overall, you're probably still saving yourself some money. So it's, yeah. you know, and, and remember in this, oh, I've lost, ah, lost my earbuds. Anyhow, remember in all of this, that you're creating your own oasis in your own life. So it doesn't matter what I've done or what Carmen's done or what oh, Dwight or anybody else has done. It's what you're creating for you. So you're keeping what you honestly need. You really use, you truly love. And it's up to you what you rehome, where you send it to, what you do with it. But, you know, just don't wait for one day. Go ahead and do it and, and then get on with your life. You know, you travel, you garden, you read. You just sit and go, ah, oh, and everything. Yeah. You help it's somebody in its out place. of ditch or you, you make something yeah, or you yeah. know something or whatever. I mean, whatever that hobby is that you yeah. to get your hands on, guess what? Yeah. You can make space in your life yes. to do that. Eat a, eat a pint of haagen ice cream. That's what I did at the very end. Yeah. All that sugar. Oh, good for you. I loved it. It was good. <laughs> yeah, but you earned it at that point. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> and I made several thousand dollars at the same time, even though... You know, I was in the hole, but I mean, for if you think about all those years and all the right. rent and mortgage and whatever in the bigger house and stuff, but um, yeah, it, it's time to live life and to, and I don't mean that in a wild, crazy thing, but um, it's okay to embrace yourself. It's okay to love yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay to be true to who you are. Yes. Um, whether you believe in God or not, it's your God-given life or your blessed life, your oasis life, whatever. And it, it, it really is. It's time to do it because if you wait for one day, it just never comes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to make the choice to start or it will never get to the finish line. Right. That's, and, re that's... and reach out for help if you need it. Just reach out for help. And you can always find me on Facebook or whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, I recommend the book and, and yes. uh, Carmen's book. And I think, Brent, you know, there's a lot of books out there that'll help. There are some but, really helpful books. Yeah. You yeah. know, so, but you have to be careful to get, not to get to the point point where you're reading all the time and don't get started <laughs> yeah I've been start somewhere <laughs> that's okay but you know get started somewhere so you'll be fine yeah I've enjoyed it thank you oh me too <laughs> so thank you so much Brenda Mason for being with me today and here's her book 31 day guide to creating your clutter-free home oasis and you can find her class that will be open soon and downsizing31.com. More information about her is also available at smallerlivinghugelife.com. So thanks for being with me today, Brenda. It's been a lot of fun. We've covered a lot of really helpful information. You can find my entire conversation with Brenda at simplifymy.life. 
And we, we sat down and talked for quite a while about all of the things that we learned um, going tiny and the transformation that's made for both of us. And I love her story and I know that you'll find her resources helpful as well. So, so check her out at smallerlivinghugelife.com and thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. I asked Brenda the question, where do you begin? And I love her answer. Her answer was, start with your closet. And that is really great advice because you know it is so, uh, it's so easy to get fantastic results really fast that way. You can go through your closet, get rid of everything that doesn't fit today, get everything that's stained or torn or is somehow in disrepair uh, that, I mean, Maybe you're the sort of person who mends your clothes, and that's great. I don't happen to be one of those people. Uh, I always intend to be that person, but realistically speaking, I'm not. So um, go ahead and get all of those um, those little nag projects that are in your closet that you haven't gotten done and just sitting there nagging you. Make sure you get out everything that has a negative memory attached. Just go ahead and get all of that malignant stuff out of there. And if it doesn't fit you today, the woman that you are, the woman or man that you are today, get it out of your closet. No shame closing in your closet. And that right there, I mean, I've had times in my life when that was a, almost a clean slate. <laughs> Getting rid of all of that. Uh, was huge for me. So um, I also really want to recommend the capsule wardrobe idea. And I have created what I wish I could have found at the beginning of my journey with a capsule wardrobe. Instead, I spent months <laughs> down the rabbit hole researching this idea and I have made it drastically simpler. So I've created a checklist. I divide the capsule wardrobe, which is generally 30 some items. I've, for myself, divided into three groups, 10 each, and then um, I do one pod of one color, one pod of another color, and one pod of a third color, and then when I'm reaching into my wardrobe in the morning, I'm combining those three colors most days. And so I've picked my three favorite colors, and who knows, maybe next time I put together my capsule wardrobe, I may choose different colors, but I loved it so much that after three months, I continued. <laughs> I didn't have time at that moment to uh, to sit down and, and rework the whole wardrobe and I didn't really have much motivation to do it anyway because I loved what I put together so much and if you take a day or two and really zero in use the checklist to um, to get your order out of chaos and to see which pieces you need and which pieces you have that you really love and create a capsule wardrobe around that what you'll find is that you will be better dressed more of the time. And that is really, I was so surprised by that. I mean, everybody who's done it says that. <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're reading blogs and watching YouTube videos, that's what everybody says. But you know how it is. You, sometimes you have to be there and experience it yourself to understand just how liberating it can be. So I would recommend going to my website and looking for the little sign that says Practically Tiny. It's under the Classes heading. And in this class, I'm going over Capsule Wardrobe. And then I take a capsule approach to self-care. And so I have a checklist for that. And a capsule approach to your kitchen. And I have a checklist for that. So if you love to cook, or if you're a retired chef and restaurant owner like I am, you're going to love this because it gets you down to the basics without having to sit there and, and think it all through yourself. It's just all right there for you. Super, super simple. And I really love that. And plus, I mean, what could be easier? You just simply go through and check off the items. That's it. And then from that list, and take it from me, I'm a retired chef and restaurant owner, from this list, you can make just about anything. Now, I'm not talking about uh, the British baking show, everything. I'm talking about normal people, <laughs> everything. Okay, so go to my website, carmenshank.com. Look for Practically Tiny. I'll go ahead and check out on that. And when you're checking out, it's a $27 class usually, but for this week only, I'm giving it away for free. Now, this is my gift to you for being a listener. But secondly, we have this virus going around and it's keeping some of us home a little bit more than usual. And if you're home and you're feeling a little restless and you need something to do, here's my gift to you. Listen to the videos, go through the checklist, do your homework, refine and 
create order create order out of chaos in your home you're gonna love this because what it does is it creates order in your home but it also but it also allows you to live with more space in your home and you may even find you like your house better <laughs> I know I do <laughs> so go to my website carmenshank.com and look for practically tiny go ahead and check out on that it's a $27 class but use this coupon code and I'm gonna put it in the uh, show notes as well COVID19 okay and use that as the coupon code that will give you the class for free and then you can take it from there okay so that's the best antiviral I know of is to get some order out of chaos in your life and gain back some of the control that life is wrestling from us right now. Go ahead. You can do it. I know you can. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. You can follow me on Instagram at Carmen Rose Shank. You can subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Please do. And you can download us on iTunes. The music is composed by William Kirkpatrick, lyrics by Louisa Stead, arranged and performed by classical guitarist Jonathan Crispin. Show notes available at carmenshank.com.